Hello and welcome to this session on data science. My name is Mohan and today we are going to take a look at what this buzz is all about. So now let's talk about the life cycle of a data science project. Okay, the first step is the concept study. In this step, it involves understanding the business problem, asking questions, get a good understanding of the business model, meet up with all the stakeholders, understand what kind of data is available, and all that is a part of the first step. So here are a few examples. We want to see what are the various specifications and then what is the end goal, what is the budget, is there an example of this kind of a problem that has been maybe solved earlier. So all this is a part of the concept study. And another example could be a very specific one to predict the price of a 1.35 carat diamond and there may be relevant information, inputs that are available, and we want to predict the price. The next step in this process is data preparation, data gathering and data preparation, also known as data munging, or sometimes it is also known as data manipulation. So what happens here is the raw data that is available may not be usable in its current format for various reasons. So that is why in this step, a data scientist would explore the data. He will take a look at some sample data, maybe pick, if there are millions of records, pick a few thousand records and see how the data is looking. Are there any gaps? Is the structure appropriate to be fed into the system? Are there some columns which are probably not adding value, may not be required for the analysis? Very often these are like names of the customers. They will probably not add any value or much value from an analysis perspective. The structure of the data, maybe the data is coming from multiple data sources and the structures may not be matching. What are the other problems? There may be gaps in the data. So the data, all the columns, all the cells are not filled. If you're talking about structured data, there are several blank records or blank columns. So if you use that data directly, you'll get errors or you'll get inaccurate results. So how do you either get rid of that data or how do you fill this gaps with something meaningful? So all that is a part of data munging or data manipulation. So these are some additional sub topics within that. So data integration is one of them. If there are any conflicts in the data, there may be data may be redundant. Yeah, data redundancy is another issue. There may be you have, let's say, data coming from two different systems and both of them have customer table, for example, or customer information. So when you merge them, there is a duplication issue. So how do we resolve that? So that is one. Data transformation. As I said, there will be situations where data is coming from multiple sources and then when we merge them together, they may not be matching. So we need to do some transformations to make sure everything is similar. We may have to do some data reduction. If the data size is too big, you may have to come up with ways to reduce it meaningfully without losing information. Then data cleaning. So there will be either wrong values or you null values or there are missing values. So how do you handle all of that? A few examples of very specific stuff. So if there are missing values. How do you handle missing values or null values? Here in this particular slide, we are seeing three types of issues. One is missing value. Then you have null value. You see the difference between the two, right? So in the missing value, there is nothing blank. Null value, it says null. Now the system cannot handle if there are null values. Similarly, there is improper data. So it's supposed to be numeric value, but there is a string or a non-numeric value. So how do we clean and prepare the data so that our system can work flawlessly? So there are multiple ways and, and there is no one common way of doing this. It can vary from project to project. It can vary from what exactly is the problem we are trying to solve. It can vary from data scientist to data scientist, organization to organization. So these are like some standard practices people come up with. And, and of course, there will be a lot of trial and error. Somebody would have tried out something and it worked and it'll continue to use that mechanism. So that's how we need to take care of data cleaning. Now, what are the various ways of doing, you know, if, if values are missing? How do you take care of that? Now, if the data is too large and um, 
only a few records have some missing values then it is okay to just get rid of those entire rows for example so if you have a million records and out of which 100 records don't have full data so there are some missing values in about 100 records so it's absolutely fine because it's a small percentage of the data so you can get rid of the entire records which have missing values but that's not a very common situation very often you will have multiple or at least you know a large number of a data set for example out of million records you may have 50000 records which are like having missing values now that's a significant amount you cannot get rid of all those records your analysis will be inaccurate so how do you handle such situation so there are again multiple ways of doing it one is you can probably if a particular values are missing in a particular column you can probably take the mean value for that particular column and fill all the missing values with the mean value so that first of all you don't get errors because of missing values and second you don't get results that are way off because these values are completely different from what is there so that is one way then a few other uh, could be either taking the median value or depending on what kind of data we are talking about so something meaningful we will have put in there if we are doing some machine learning activity then obviously as a part of data preparation you need to split the data into training and test data set the reason being if you try to test with a, a data set which the system has already seen as a part of training then it will tend to give reasonably accurate results because it has already seen that data and that is not a good measure of the accuracy of the system so typically you take the entire data set the input data set and split it into two parts and again the ratio can vary from person to person individual preferences some people like to split it into 50 50 some people like it as 63.33 and 33.3 is basically two third and one third and some people do it as 80 20 80 for training and 20 for testing so you split the data perform the training with the 80% and then use the remaining 20% for testing all right so that is one more data preparation activity that needs to be done before you start analyzing or applying the data or putting the data through the model then the next step is model planning now this models can be statistical models this could be machine learning models so you need to decide what kind of models you are going to use again it depends on what is the problem you are trying to solve if it is a regression problem you need to think of a regression algorithm and come up with a regression model so it could be linear regression or if you are talking about classification then you need to pick up an appropriate classification algorithm like logistic regression or decision tree or svm and then you need to train that particular model so that is the model building or model planning process and the cleaned up data has to be fed into the model and apart from cleaning you may also have to in order to determine what kind of model you will use you have to perform some exploratory data analysis to understand the relationship between the various variables and uh, see if the data is appropriate and so on right so that is the additional preparatory step that needs to be done so little bit of details about exploratory data analysis so what exactly is exploratory data analysis is basically to as the name suggests you're just exploring you just receive the data and you're trying to explore and uh, find out what are the data types and what is the is the data clean in in each of the columns what is the maximum minimum value so for example there are out of the box functionality available in tools like r so if you just ask for a summary of the table it will tell you for each column it will give some details as to what is the mean value what is the maximum value and so on and so forth so this exercise or this exploratory analysis is to get an understanding of your data and then you can take steps to during this process you find there are a lot of missing values you need to take steps to fix those you will also get an idea about what kind of model to be used and so on and so forth what are the various techniques used for exploratory data analysis typically these would be visualization techniques like you use histograms uh, you can use box plots you can use scatter plots so these are very quick ways of identifying the patterns or a few of the trends of the data and so on and then 
once your data is ready you, you've decided on the model what kind of model what kind of algorithm you're going to use if you're trying to do machine learning you need to pass your 80 percent the training data or rather you use that training data to train your model and the training process itself is iterative so the training process you may have to perform multiple times and once the training is done and you feel it is giving good accuracy then you move on to test so you take the remaining 20 percent of the data remember we split the data into training and test so the test data is now used to check the accuracy or how well our model is performing and if, if there are further issues let's say and the model is still during testing if the accuracy is not good then you may want to retrain your model or use a different model so this whole thing again can be iterated but if the test process is passed or if the model passes the test then it can go into production and it will be deployed all right so what are the various tools that we use for model planning R is an excellent tool in a lot of ways, whether you're doing regular statistical analysis or machine learning or any of these activities, R in, along with R Studio provides a very powerful environment to do data analysis, including visualization. It has a very good integrated visualization or plot mechanism, which can be used for doing exploratory data analysis and then later on to do analysis detailed analysis and machine learning and so on and so forth then of course you can write python programs python offers a rich library for performing data analysis and machine learning and so on matlab is a very popular tool as well especially during education so this is a very easy to learn tool so matlab is another uh, tool that can be used and then last but not least sas sas is again very powerful it is a proprietary tool and it has all the components that are required to perform very good statistical analysis or perform data science. So those are the various tools that would be required for or that, that can be used for model building. And uh, so the next step is model building. So we have done the planning part. We said, okay, what is the algorithm we are going to use? What kind of model we are going to use? Now we need to actually train this model or build the model rather so that it can then be deployed. So what are the various uh, ways or what are the various types of model building activities? So it could be, let's say, in this particular example that we have taken, you want to find out the price of 1.35 carat diamond. So this is let's say a linear regression problem you have data for various carats of diamond and you use that information you pass it through a linear regression model or you create a real linear regression model which can then predict your price for 1.35 carat so this is one example of model building and then a little bit details of how linear regression works so linear regression is basically coming up with a relation between an independent variable and a dependent variable so it is pretty much like coming up with equation of a, a straight line which is the best fit for the given data so like for example here y is equal to mx plus c so y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable we need to determine the values of m and c for our given data so that is what the training process of uh, this model does at the end of the training process you have a certain value of m and c and um, that is used for predicting the values of any new data that comes all right so the way it works is we use the training and the test data set to train the model and then validate whether the model is working fine or not using test data and uh, if it is working fine then it is taken to the next level which is put in production if not the model has to be retrained if the accuracy is not good enough then the model is retrained maybe with more data or you come up with a newer model or algorithm and then repeat that process so it is an iterative process once the training is completed training and test then this model is deployed and we can use this particular model to determine what is the price of 1.35 carat diamond remember that was our problem statement so now that we have the best fit for this given data we have the price of 1.35 
carat diamond, which is 10,000. So this is one example of how this whole process works. Now, how do we build the model? There are multiple ways. You can use Python, for example, and use libraries like Pandas or NumPy to build the model and implement it. This will be available as a separate tutorial, a separate video in this playlist. So stay tuned for that. Moving on, once we have the results, the next step is to communicate these results to the appropriate stakeholders. So it is basically taking this results and preparing like a presentation or a dashboard and communicating these results to the concerned people. So finishing or getting the results of the analysis is not the last step, but you need to, as a data scientist, take these results and present it to the team that has given you this problem in the first place and explain your findings, explain the findings of this exercise and recommend maybe what steps they need to take in order to overcome this problem or solve this problem. So that is the pretty much once that is accepted and the, the last step is to operationalize. So if everything is fine, your data scientist presentations are accepted, then they put it into practice and thereby they will be able to improve or solve the problem that they stated in step one. Okay. So quick summary of the life cycle. You have a concept study, which is basically understanding the problem, asking the right questions, and trying to see if there is uh, enough data to solve this problem. And then even maybe gather the data. Then data preparation, the raw data needs to be manipulated. You need to do data munging so that you have the data in a certain proper format to be used by the model or our analytics system. And then you need to do the model planning, what kind of a model, what algorithm you will use for a given problem. And then the model building. So the exact execution of that model it happens in step four and you implement and execute that model and uh, put the data through the analysis in this step and then you get the results. These results are then communicated, packaged and presented and communicated to the stakeholders and once that is accepted, that is operationalized. So that is the final step. So with that, we come to the end of this session. Thank you very much for watching this video. And if there are any feedback, there are any comments, please, or any questions, please put it below and we will get back to you, provide your contact information or email so that we can respond to you. And uh, thank you very much once again and have a good day. Bye-bye. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.